So, uh, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, that is one of those things, as you can tell, uh, some things are changing. We have uh, c- kind of some new media going on, some new things happening on the, the, the TV. And you might see this hashtag on the bottom here, and you're going to see this a little more often if you're on social media at all. And I know that some of you might be on Facebook right now. But as you check in or wherever you're at, you know, some of you might be there right now. Just go ahead and hashtag Edge Community. You know, why not? You know, that's why we have it there. We, you know, it's a, I know, we're going to dive into that though. So today, you know, we have this, we have this great service, but today we, uh, as we come together and uh, at the end of the first service, my wife comes up to me and she goes, that was really, really good. She goes, anytime that you convict me that you did really good. She's like, usually I just listen out there. I just hear you and I just go, ah, whatever. I'm just too busy away on Facebook. No, but 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 she uh, she comes up to me and she goes that was really good she you let me know how bad of a friend I am and I go well, I didn't want to do that but today we are talking about friendships we are talking about what's gonna how do we change things how do we have things going on a little different in our lives and what are we gonna change and how are we gonna become better friends and what should we expect as friends what should we be looking for and what should, what, are, what are things gonna go on most of us we might make some good decisions when it comes to picking friends uh, we might make some. Now, before we dive in, I want to tell you is that this is one of our more important studies of the year. It really is. This is kind of one of those things, as we look at these series, this is one of the most important ones because this is how we grow. We grow through one another. We grow through, through equipping one another. We grow through being able to raise each other up. And so this is critical. Now, you have to forgive me of the ADD. It came out just now. But my wife failed to mention both services that Class 101 is today. <laughs> so Class 101 is at 5 o'clock today. So she failed to mention both of them. But it is in the bulletin on the bottom, by the way. <laughs> um, um, but so anyway, back into, uh, back into my, you know, that's that ADD. Woo! Right, right all the while. So um, most of us get friendships. We, we, when we look at this, some of us, we get it right. Some of us get it wrong. When we do get it right, our friends set us up for success. This, our friendships bring us through in every important area. The problem is that a lot of us, we get it wrong. And when we get it wrong, it brings pain, it brings destruction, and then it, 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 and just more than we can ever imagine. It just drags us down. When we hang out with the wrong people, it brings us down to such a level that we go, uh, what am I doing wrong? What's going on in my life? How do I change this? How do I make this better? When we when we do when we when we don't make proper friends, it, it, it actually changes how our future goes. Really, there's a quote out there. It says, "Show me your friends, and I'll show you your future." Show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. Now think about this: if you're hanging out with alcoholics, guess what you probably are? You're probably an alcoholic. If you're hanging out with drug users, you're probably a drug user. If you're hanging out with people that all they do is they talk about how much porn they watch, then you're probably a porn addict. All these different things, you have so much stuff going on. The people that you surround yourself with, the people that you live around with, the people that are around you on a regular basis, and when you consider them friends, they probably are the ones that bring you down sometimes. You're like, oh, these are my best friends. They're probably the ones that have brought you down to a level to where you go, it's acceptable for me to be an alcoholic. It's acceptable for me to always worry about money. It's acceptable for this. You know, guys, it, it really says, and in, in, when you read Proverbs 13, 20, it says, walk with the wise and become wise. Now, listen to this. Walk with the wise and become wise. It doesn't say that I'm going to go out, I'm going to walk around with people that are, that are just trying to drag me down. It says, walk with the wise. It says, walk with people who want to help you grow. Walk with people who want to be there with you. Walk with the wise and become wise. Now, it says, for a companion of fools suffers harm. Who are you hanging out with? Are you hanging out with fools? Are you you out there? Are you running around and you're going, man, I hang out with a bunch of idiots. I hang out with people who don't care if I'm going to grow, who don't care if t- what happens tomorrow. I don't care. They just don't care about anything except for themselves. Those are fools. People who only care about themselves are fools. Because the Bible tells us very clearly 
that we're supposed to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. So when we hang out and we just do anything that we go out and we go, oh, oh, it's all about me, well, we're being foolish at that point. Who do we hang out with? Do we hang out with people that only worry about themselves or do we hang out with people that are trying to become wise, that are trying to do things differently? Look at David. David goes, God, just give me wisdom. Give me wisdom. He didn't go, give me riches. He didn't go, give me power. Give me wisdom. And then God poured into him so abundantly, and he gave him so much more. God, give me wisdom. Give me the strength to lead your people. Feed me. What are we doing? Any success that I have in life, any success, I can, I can look at it, and it's a result of God and the people around me. Every success in my life. I look at it, I started a church. It's because of the people around me and God. It's because I had a good group of, I had a group of people that were like, I support you. I want you to do well. I want to be there for you. They helped grow us. And then there was God. And God is going, well, here, you have surrounded yourself with people of wisdom. Here is your growth. This is the abundance. Here I'm going to pour out. Guys, when I look at all of the failures that I have and every time that I've gotten into trouble, guess what? It's been because I never went out and got in trouble all on my own. I always had people around me. I always had friends, and they were just complete instigators. They were like, come on, let's go do this. Come on, let's get another drink. Come on, let's take another shot. Come on, let's do this. Come on, let's do that. It was never, hey, we should go home and study our Bibles a little more tonight. <laughs> what? That never happened. It was always, let's do this. Let's do that. Let's go out and do this. Let's have fun. Let's... It was never, ever, hey, we should go out. And we should go get into a Bible study, or we should be part of a group, or we should help each other grow, or we should go, even if it wasn't a Bible thing, we should be like, hey, we should be here to support one another. Nope. It was, let's go get drunk. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. And most of the time when we do that, we do things that are very foolish. We go out, we start drinking, we start getting intoxicated, we do these things, and all of a sudden you go, why did I get a DUI? Because we were hanging out with fools. That's exactly why. Now, what I want all you guys to do is inside of that bulletin that you got, there's a list of five lines, and it says, name your five closest friends. So now some of you may have some difficulty filling in all five lines. So you can just go ahead and put my name at number five. You can go, Mike is one of my closest friends. Okay? Now, you cannot write down your imaginary friend. You have to write down real people. You have to write down people that are actually in your life. You can't write down your significant other. It's got to be a friend. It can't be, it, you, you got to write it down. Who are my closest friends? Who are people that I can count on, that I can tell them everything? You know, not family, friends. People that are there. And you look at it and go, one, two, three, four, five. And I'm telling you, it's going to be very difficult. If you can fill up all five, I'm going to be amazed. I really will. <laughs> if you fill out all five, I, I'm amazed. Your average of five closest friends. So you have, you, you have your fiancé, that wild thing that you know about in the past, any of those things as you look back. You know, maybe those people that are spiritually focused, like it or not, those are the people that you run with. Right? That's how it is. Those are the people that you run with on a regular basis. What do you have down? Now, I'm going to give you what friendship is defined. Maybe this will help you out a little bit. Okay, so here's Friendship. A friend is someone you may or may not know well who accepts your friend request on Facebook. This person is born to like and comment on your post to make you feel good about yourself. That's Proverbs 17:17, 17, 17, Facebook edition. Okay. That's, that's Facebook version right there. It's in your notes. I promise you I didn't come up with it. No, I'm kidding. I did come up with this. When you read this and you look at this, those are not friends. Those are not people that you can go, I count on those people. They're not. Those are the people that you go, you put something on there, they put a comment, and they go, LOL. What does that mean? They didn't laugh out loud. They just thought about laughing out loud. And they were like, oh, that might have been funny. You know, or they might chuckle. <laughs> you know, kind of like when they, when they release a silent but deadly fart in, the, in, the, in public. They're like, <laughs> wait until you get that one. <laughs> you know, it's kind of one of those things that it may happen. You may, oh, well, that one slipped. <laughs> That's the laugh out loud. That's not the that's not the real laugh out loud. They do you say something really funny on Facebook and they're like, ah, that's so funny. No, they laugh out loud. They go like, ah, that was kind of funny. 
You know, but that's what we do. That's what we consider friendship. How many more people can I get to like my status? How many people can I get to do this? Let's look at what the Bible really tells us. A friend loves at all times. A friend loves at all times. Not just every once in a while, not just when I feel like, hey, I'm going to call and see how you're doing. A friend loves at all times. Doesn't matter what you did. Doesn't matter if you're calling from county jail. They answer the phone and they go, I love you. What can I do to help? Because I might be calling you later. I don't know. You know, that's what they do. That's what a real friend does. They want to be there for you. They want to call you. They want to be able to go, I am here no matter what the situation is. A friend loves at all times. And a brother is born for a time of adversity. So when you read this and you hear this and you listen and you go, and we're not talking about just your family brothers. They were talking about your brother in Christ, your sister in Christ. We're talking that that familiar relationship, the family, that they are going to be there for when things go bad. They are there. They are there for you. They want to love on you. They want to be with you. How many of us have those? How many of us have those people that we go, I have this? You guys, everybody in the room should be like, I got that person. They're there. I know they're there. I know that they're, I know. Now, here's the problem. American study, there's, there's a couple of studies that have come out, but the average person in America has two friends. Two. That's the studies that just recently, 75% of America has only two friends. Two friends. The other 25% have nobody. They have nobody. There's nobody there that they can call and go, I want, I, I need you. I need somebody to, I I need, this is what's going on. I need somebody to talk to. I need somebody to love on. There's just nobody. It is you, yourself, and that's it. How do we change that? What do we got to do? And, and why is that a problem? What's going on? Why are our friendships declining? What is happening? Why are they declining? Number one is that we are increasingly working more hours. Over and over and over again, we continue to take more time away from our families, and we work more. We, t we spend hours commuting to and from jobs. We spend hours at this job that most of us don't like. Most of us are going, I don't want to be here. We spend two hours on the road. We spend eight hours there, another two hours home. That's 12 hours out of our day. A healthy person gets eight hours. It's only four hours left at home. But what do we do with that four hours? Most of us come in. We shut down. We turn, off the, you know, we turn on the TV. We spend a half hour there. And then all of a sudden, there's three and a half hours left. There's no time to take the kids to go play soccer. There's no, kid, there's no time for any of that stuff. These increasingly, because, you know, some of us, and that's only if you work an eight-hour day. What happens if you have a 10-hour day? What happens if you have a 12-hour day? What happens if you're working so much, and you've got to add on that two-hour commute both ways? All of a sudden, your life is work. It becomes that, and you become work, and you no longer become a friend or somebody that people can rely on because you are too busy for them. That work is more important. And you know, guys, you've got to survive. But sometimes making all the money in the world isn't a benefit for being a friend and, and just having enough to, to survive. So sometimes, some of, maybe that's, I don't know why that came out because that wasn't last service, but somebody needed to hear that right now. That we're increasing those work hours is not going to make your life better. It's actually going to make it worse. That fulfillment that you're looking for there, it's not there. It's not at work. I, 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 I don't, somebody, that, that's for somebody this morning. I will tell you right now, and then number two is the r rising divorce rates. Guys, relationships are splitting faster and faster and faster. You know, you hear about this. People are not together. And, and they're not together. You know, when you hear about this, it, it used to be in the past, it used to be people stayed an average together of 10 years, and then the divorce rate started happening. But guys, now it's four years. Four. Four years and people are getting divorced. You hear that, and that's, that's, a, that, that's crazy. Now, Melissa and I, we share about 255 Facebook friends. So you guys have, maybe you guys have that. Maybe you and your, 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 your significant other, you share a lot of common friends on Facebook. You know, you look at it and go, wow, I, I know a lot of people that they know. Yeah, because you hang out together all the time. Well, guess what happens when you get divorced? As a guy, you step away and go, those are all now her friends because they're going to take her side anyway. You know, that's how we look at it. You know, it's, those are her friends, and I'm on my way now. Those are no longer my friends. 
And we go, I, you know, because we think of man, we go, I can build new friends. I'm really good at this. I'm, I'm a people person. No, you're not. You're not a people person. We need good friends. We need people around us. We need people to support us. And that, the relationship should have never gotten a divorce if you had good friends. It should have never gotten to that point because you would have people that stick together and go, what's wrong? Let me help you build. But this rising divorce rate is what has caused us to where we end up losing friends very, very fast. It's a big, boom, it's a dividing, it's a hammer. It just comes right down between the two of you and your friends end up picking anyway. The last thing is this explosion of social media. It is crazy. Everybody spends so much time on social media. It has redefined what it means to be a friend. It literally is, before Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, no one called friends to tell them what they had for breakfast. They didn't go, hey, I had bacon, eggs, and, and, and hash browns, and cheese all baked together, and it was great. Nobody did that. Now everybody takes a picture and sends it out by all these different means of getting it out there. Everybody knows what you had for breakfast. People will be sitting in the bathroom going, this is what I had. This, what are you doing? I don't want to know all that. This whole Instagram, this Facebook and Twitter, uh, it's changed. We even think in 140 characters now. We've gone from going, I have complete sentences to how do I abbreviate this to where people can understand it. S, what is it, shake my head? You know, SMH. <laughs> See, I don't know. I had to ask somebody yesterday. I was like, what does this mean? I, I don't know what this means. You know, LOL. You know, <laughs> what does SMH mean, LOL? You know, I don't know. <laughs> Let's see, uh, rolling on the floor, uh, I guess, I mean, you know. We look for it. More followers, more likes, more Facebook friends, more of this, more of that. That's where we get our social, that's where we're looking for going, these are my friends. They're not your friends. They're not. They are far from your friends. They are counterfeit to what God intended for you. They are they're just a counterfeit, and it's just what you fill yourself up with that makes you think, Oh, these are friends. But realistically, at the end of the day, you feel empty. You feel unfulfilled. You sit down and go, I wish I had somebody I could just talk to. I wish that I had somebody I could relate to. I wish that I had somebody I could pour out my hurts to. And you don't do that to people on Facebook because you want to keep this prideful status. You want to keep this direction going. And you want to keep these things. And you go, I'm, at some point, maybe I'll do that. Guys, we have to change. We have to change what our definition is. We have to change this idea that thinking that the more I use social media, the better I'm going to get. Really, the, the realization is the more I use social media, the more I'm going to crave social media, the more empty I'm going to be, the less fulfilled, and the less I'm going to search for true friendship. We spend so much time just digging into it, going, I'm going to find friends here that we abandon and we really get away from finding the people that are really designed to be our friends, what God has intended for us, what God has said, this is what I intend for you. Not this, not this, not this artificial, this, this stimulant. It's, you might as well be on alcohol, you might as well be on drugs because you're missing out on what's really, really important. God designed us in the beginning to be with people, to be with friends, to be around people. God designed us, he said, God is not made, man is not made to be alone. That's what he told us. He is not made to be alone. So he put us to sleep and he said, here, let me take this rib and I'm going to give you a partner, a helper, somebody to be there with you. And that person's Eve. So some of us have that. Some of us have friendships. Some of us have love. Some of us have that, where we have that, that partner, that helper. Some of us don't. Some of us, we just don't have anybody there. And we look at him and go, why am I so unfulfilled? This, this series is what we're going to talk about that. We're going to go through it. This week we're talking, you know, we're, we're talking about what type of friends do you have and what type of friend are you. Next week we're going to talk about one friend away from being happy, one friend away from finding that support system. The following week we're going to talk about this community. What does it mean to be part of a community of friends, a group of people? When we look at Jesus, Jesus was around 12 people all the time, 12, but he still had three that it were special friends, that were just his closest, that were just, hey, I want, I got people I can pour into. He had three close people. And then number four, week four of this series, we're going to talk about unfriending because a lot of us, we have relationships with people 
that we know that we need to step out of and go, you know what, I need to get away from this guy or this girl or whatever it is. They are just not healthy for me, and they're not healthy for what I and what God has intended for my life to become. So we need to start working on unfriending. You know, guys, so many of us are afraid of hitting unfriend on the, on the Facebook. They're like, oh, maybe, maybe they'll come around. Oh, we, we, we just we, we forget about it all the time. We need to re- rediscover the lost art of friendship. And the number one thing is we need to be present. We need to be in the relationship. We need to be there. We need to be part of what we're doing. And right now we're not. So often we go, I will be there. I want to develop my friendships. I want to, I want, you know, but we're never face-to-face. We never come together. We never show up to group. We never show up at men's breakfast. We never show up to women's group. We never show up to any of these things to go, I want to start developing good friends. What we do is we come to church on Sundays. We come, we come so we can recognize a few faces, and then we never see each other again after that. We know, oh, I know you, I know you, that's great. But then we never see you again until next Sunday. That is not a friendship. That is called acquaintances. And if you're looking to make friendships out of that, it is not going to happen until you start diving in and start going, I'm going to become part of a group or at least become part of a small group of three and four people. It has to happen. You have to have people around you to hold you accountable. It needs to be face-to-face contact. Not thumb to thumb. Text me, I'll text you back. I've heard that so many times, even in our own lobby. It's not about texting back and forth. It's about meeting face to face. Let's do coffee. Let's have lunch. Let's do something together. Not, let me text you. No, it doesn't work for me. And maybe you got an iPhone and you got Siri that goes, I'll translate it. It's still thumb to thumb. Okay? You know, Jesus didn't say, hey, read this book and then follow me. No. No. He said, hey, let's get together. Let's do it now. Follow me. Let's spend time together. He didn't go, hey, let's go out and do this and let's do that. No, he said, let's let's do this. Let's follow me. Come with me. Be present. You know, as kids, we grow up and we know when something's not right when we don't talk to somebody. We just know it. We can sense it instantly. Something's not wrong. And we don't have to wait a week. We can know within a few hours. I haven't talked to Tommy in four hours. What's wrong? So He's mad at me. We know instantly. But as soon as we become adults, all of a sudden it seems like, oh, it's been a week. Things are cool. We're good. I don't think so. Well, you know instantly when something is wrong. You know instantly when something needs to change. You just don't act on it. You're like, I don't really want to be. I'll get to it later. You know when something's wrong. Maybe you yelled and screamed at each other. You need to fix it. Whatever it is. But you need to meet face to face. You need to be present. You're not going to handle it over the phone. You're not going to handle it through Facebook. You're not going to handle it through text messaging. You need to get together, meet face-to-face. Maybe you need to do it over breakfast. doesn't matter what it is, but you need to sit down and you need to be present for one another so that you can grow and so your friendship can turn into what God has truly intended it to be. You're not going to do that with people that are fake and people that are online. It's just not going to happen. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to do acts of love. So let's stop there. I don't care what you're following on Facebook. You could be following Jesus himself. It's going to be very difficult for him to motivate you on Facebook to go do acts of love. He did that in person. He did that by coming here and spending three years in ministry motivating people to go out and do acts of love. He didn't do it. There was a reason why God had to send his son, not only to die for our sins, but also so he could start motivating us to do something. He needed to motivate us. He was like, here, you need to see how this is done. You need to see, you need some examples because you just don't like the, you just don't like me going, I'm going to breathe divine word into you. You wanted real life things. And so he sends his son here and, and we look at his son and go, oh, man, that is amazing. He did some amazing things. He was so loving. He gave us the perfect example, the motivation. The problem is, he did it in person, not through Facebook, not through all these other things. He did it in person. What are you doing through Facebook? You look at it and go, oh, maybe I'll start doing that. There is nothing more motivating than having somebody go, hey, let's go do this together right now. Let's go work on our restoration project. Let's go be part of a group together. There is nothing more motivating than doing it together. What are you doing together right now? Or are you just sitting on the sidelines and you going, I would like to do that, like, maybe I'll even comment about that one. What is it? Where are we at? Are you being present? Are you doing something different? Are you motivating one another to do acts of love and good works? 
And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do. Let us not neglect meeting together. All right. How often are we meeting together? We do this Sunday mornings. We have plenty of opportunity for groups. But how often are you meeting together? Because I'm here all the time. How often are you meeting together is the question. Where are you at? What are you doing? Are you meeting together with people that are going to help you grow? Are you meeting together with people that are going to drag you down? Maybe it's even sometimes it's our own family that is pulling us down. We have such negative people around us sometimes. Sometimes we have people around us that are going, I need this, I need that, I want this, I want that. Well, you can't have that until you start putting your shovel to the ground and start working for it. Sometimes we have to be that hard love and that, that person that goes, I need to see you grow. Let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another. Man. Hey, I'll, I'll get you some water while you're digging. I'll help you. I want to be there for you. Let's encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. That's Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. There is power in presence, guys. There is power in God's presence, and there's power in our presence being there. There is power in presence. When we look back and we go, man, I got to be there. I got to be there with that person. There is power in presence. Being there for somebody and leading them and guiding them, it is powerful. That's just how God was. When he came here, he's like, there's power in the presence of him. There's power in his presence as we looked and we go, man, that's an example I want to follow. We're talking about it 2,000 years later. That's how powerful presence is. What's your presence? How powerful is your presence? It's amazing on when we are there for one another, when we have things going on, when somebody has something happening, that when somebody shows up and they're like, hey, I'm here to just support you and love on you. It's amazing on how far that goes and how you can see the growth in them. We have to be there for one another. As in the last service, I'm going to tell you is that I was a freshman in, in high school. And um, I got invited to go to a, uh, I got invited to go to a party. And as this freshman, I was really, really trying to stay and hang out with the cool people and really trying to, tr to try and be this. I wanted to be something that I, I really wasn't. And a lot of people didn't go to the same party. In fact, no one went to this party. And the hard part is, is that six months later, that person committed suicide. And guys, every day for a long time, I look back at it and go, what sort of person was I that I couldn't be there to support, to love, to show them that I can be there? It's how powerful presence is because without presence is death. And that's exactly what happened is that, you know, just by not being there, just by me being selfish and me being this person that I have to hang out with the cool people, I have to be this, that if I would have been there, and I'm not saying that I have to take all the blame for it, but I, I, I look at it and go, somebody should have been there. Somebody should have been there so that she could be loved, so that she would have an opportunity to have a life. But nobody was. Nobody. Where is it that we are being present? Are we being present for the people who need us most? Or are we being present for the, just ourselves? And we stand back and go, I'm going to do this all on my own, and I don't care about anybody else. And I don't care if it leads to death or not. Because that's where we're at. Where is your presence? What are you doing? Where are you guiding people? Where are you leading people? We continue to go, I'm praying for you. I don't need you just to pray for me. I need you to be here sometimes. I need you to be part of my life, not just praying for me on Facebook. I need you to come in here and start loving me. Put your hands up and pray with me. I can't just do it on the site. Oh, I'm praying for you, LOL, because that's what it is. Because did you really stop and did you really pray? Or did you just say, oh, I'm praying for you? Because a lot of times we just go praying. Yep, you didn't pray. We need to be... Not just physically present, but we need to be emotionally present as well. We need to be there for people. I can come sit down there and be like, hey, how you doing, Renee? That's fake. Start being emotionally there. Start becoming part of people's lives. 
Start changing what you're doing because right now you are a Facebook friend, even in person. You know, guys, at the end of your life, when it comes and it's all said and done, it's not going to matter how many likes your selfie had. You took that thing in the picture, you're, you're like standing in the mirror and like, mm, that looks good. Oh, maybe I'll do this. Let me put this up a little higher. <laughs> Doesn't matter how many likes that got <laughs> or dislikes or, you know, whatever it was. I don't know. Doesn't matter. I will tell you when it's all said and done with, it's going to matter who was there for you and who was sitting next to you and who was loving with you and who was going, I am here and I just want to be here and I'm not going anyplace else. Let's get this through and let's just settle this and let's just start loving. Guys, when you're sitting at lunch, put the phone down. Nobody needs to know what you're eating. Nobody cares. Put it down. It's time for us to sit in and have a conversation. Let's love one another. Put the phone down. In my life, I do have the right friends. I look at it, and I have people around me that want to support me, that want to love me. I know that. I know my best friend, in the, it, it, it's right here across the room. Oh, he is. I know. Oh, you know, I mean, you know, it's not. It, no, 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 no. It's, it's going too far there with the bromance. No, I'm kidding. The problem is, is that Cameron and I spend all day together, but we almost have no time together. You, 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 there's almost, we spend almost all day together, five days a week, but we don't really have time together. It's not really, hey, let's have a real conversation. Let's talk about these different things. And we talk about everything. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's what you don't know. We literally everything. <laughs> we talk about it, but it's not really us talking. It's not really us doing life together. It's just us talking. We need to change it. We need to change what we do. We need to be present, not just a Facebook friend. The last thing is, is we need to start opening up. So we need to get open. That's probably been up there for a little while because I've been looking at it back there. Get open. Tons of us are afraid to use the phone because we can't control what's going to happen on the other end. We're so afraid to use the phone. We go, I can't open up. I can't turn on the phone. I can't call because I don't know if they're going to answer. I don't know if they're going to ignore me. I don't know what's going to happen. We can't control the other end, so we're afraid of using the phone. We try to impress people with our strengths. We try, instead of opening ourselves up and going, look, this is who I really am, we hide all that. We bring it all in and we go, you know what, I don't, I'm not going to show any of that. I'm going to conduct myself to where you think that you get the best, you get the best picture of me. Instead of really opening up to where people get to see us and they start to, they start to understand, oh, he's a real person too. Oh, they really have lives. Oh, they really do make mistakes. Oh, life isn't perfect. Because, guys, life is not perfect for nobody. We need to help each other, but we need to start talking about it. We need to start raising one another up. We need to start loving. But it doesn't happen. People aren't going to open up if you don't open up. They're not going to be like, I want to tell you everything. But I don't know anything about you. It just doesn't work. It does not work that way. You don't just get to sit on the sidelines and go, Ah, oh, man, I love hearing all the dirt about people. I got this collection. You should see this book thing I have at home. I got this bookcase full of everybody's notes. It's just, it's not how it works. People want to be able to share experience and share life with one another. We need to share, most of us, we share weaknesses in a group. We'll come in, we'll open ourselves up. We'll be like, hey, this is what's going on. This is what happened. We look for advice. But when it comes time for that one-on-one -on -one interaction, we're like, oh, I, I don't want to talk about that. Uh-uh. I talked about that in group. We, fin we hammered that out yesterday. That's over. But when it really comes time to settle it, to get to it, to understand what was happening and to really start growing from it, we don't want that one-on-one. -on -one. We only want it in a group. We only want to deal with it there. We don't want to deal with the hard issues individually. We need to start sharing our weaknesses. You know, most of us don't know how to do it one-on-one. -on -one. We just don't know how to open ourselves up and become vulnerable. And especially as men, as men, we really don't know how to do it. Men, we're almost unwilling to do it most of the time. I will tell you, though, the Bible gives pretty clear instruction on it. And it tells us, is that it says, confess your sins to each other. And now, 
you hear this, confess your sins to each other. That doesn't just mean, let's, let me just start coming out and unloading and start telling you just all the bad. Because you're not going to get all the bad without hearing a whole bunch of good too. We need to have relationships. We need to be talking with one another. We need to have things going on, but we need to confess our sins to each other. That's where it needs to start at. We need to start there by loving. And guys, then we need to start helping each other by growing, but it starts first by praying with one another. And it says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other. Guys, when was the last time that somebody told you something that was just horrible and you just go, you know what, let's pray about it right now. And let's start from there. Let's just pray about it. Let's get God involved right now. Because too often we don't. Too often we go, this is what happened. And we just go, ah, well, this is what you should do. do, do, do. We never even gave opportunity for God to jump in and go, look, I can take care of that right now. We didn't even give him a chance. We just said, we can handle it. God, I know better than you. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. That's James 5.16. You got a playboy in the bathroom? Get rid of it. Talk to your spouse about it and start praying. You got whatever it is that you have, whatever it is that you are hiding, whatever it is that you've decided that you want to bury underneath the rug, it's going to come to light at some point. It's going to come out. It's going to open up and it's going to become public. It will. It's a matter of if it comes public now. But I'll tell you, when we get there and we're standing at the gate, they're going to be reading it off right then. They're going to be talking about it. You remember that thing that you buried back in 2013? You thought it was underneath the carpet. You thought that you put all kinds of concrete over it. It's going to be red right then, and they're all going to come to light. What is it that we need to get God involved in with right now and start changing and start moving forward and start doing something different? Because right now it's buried, but it's going to come to light. It's going to come out. We need the courage to, know, to acknowledge what is not working. Uh, what is it that's not working? Because burying our sins, not talking to people, not spending time with people, not loving with people, it's not working. It's just not. We do life. We do it all in this thing. We call it my own box. We do life the way we want to do life. We do life on Facebook. We do life on Instagram. We do life on Twitter. But we don't really do life together. God designed us for more than that. God wants more for us. He wants us just to have something so much greater. He wants us to have relationships. He wants us to have people that love us. He wants us to do life together. He didn't say, go out and do it on your own and establish as many friends as you possibly can on Facebook. He said, no, go out and love and love one another and be with one another and love your neighbor as yourself. You like being lonely? Because I hate being lonely. How do you think your neighbor feels? You think they like being lonely? The person that's sitting next to you, you think they like being lonely? She's sitting over here. They don't like being lonely. It's not what they want. They want a relationship. They want people to help them grow. They want people that are going to be there for them. They don't want to sit there and go, I want to do life all on my own. I want to do it by myself, and I want to deal with my issues all in private and, and, and just never really work through them. Nobody wants to be lonely. Nobody wants that. It's time for us to start becoming the friends that God designed us to be. It's time for us to start becoming the friends that God wanted you to have. When you think about this and you start acting and you start looking at yourself and you go, am I the type of friend that somebody wants to call a friend? Am I that person? Do I want, does somebody want me to be their friend? Because right now, I might not be a good friend, and I need to change that. Are you a good friend? Are you somebody that, i, I got to come close to him because he's going to be there for me. Start looking at yourself. God wants more for you. He wants more for me. He wants more for all of us. He wants more. He wants us to grow. He wants us to grow together. Let's change it. And it starts right now. It starts by us starting to confess our sins. It starts by us starting to go, I'm going to pray together. Guys, at the end of this service, after our worship team comes up, we're gonna pr- there's going to be people up here to pray with you. 
There's going to be people who want to who want to spend time with you, who want to reach out, and they want to just they just want you to come up and start doing something different. Start see, start searching for that healing because you're not going to find it sitting out there. You're going to find it in prayer, and you're going to find it when you get God involved. God wants more for you. He wants more for all of us. So let's pray right now. Father, thank you so much. Thank you so much for designing us for friends, to designing us for friendship, designing us for, for doing life. God, thank you so much. We ask that you just start pouring out this blessing and you just start filling us up with the Spirit so that we, we know what it is to become a friend. We know what it is to, to act like a friend. We know what it is to start going, you know what, I want to be there for the people around me. I want to be the friend that you were. I want to be the person that supports. I want to be the person that grows. I want to be the person that helps heal one another. God, I just, I just want to be there for the people around me. But God, also, I need those people around me too. I need those, I need those people that can support and lift me and help me grow and be there when I need to have accountability to be there and tell me that I, don't, that I talk too much. Whatever it is, God, I just need that accountability. I need people around me. We all need that, God. And I'm praying that you will just start giving us the courage to seek that, to fulfill that, to be that. God, we are reaching for you. We are just reaching and we're going, I feel unfulfilled. And I know that you are helping us be fulfilled by the people here, the surroundings and the people around us. And God, I just pray that you will you will guide us and you will seek and you will help the, lead those into our lives. Thank you, God, for all that you're doing and all that you have started just now. And all this we pray in your son, Jesus' name. Amen.